Hey everyone, welcome back. It is Snooker Podcast time and it's myself and Ian McCulloch, as per normal, uh, guiding you through the latest action. And we have reached round two of the United Kingdom Snooker Championship. So 128 are becoming 64 and then they'll become 32, 16, 8, 4. You know the drill. I'm not going to do maths at the start of the podcast. But anyway, we're at second round stage. Uh, and um, Ian, before we start... We've seen some really good matches in the opening round, uh, and it's the first time in in a while uh, that that opening round's been televised. We've seen lots of maximum breaks. Is it because of the the lack of pressure, the lack of any fans in in the venue? Is that making players relax, do you think? Um, I think maybe the lads are getting used to it now more than anything. Um, It will be interesting to see, and I I don't know the ins ins and outs of the various tier of lockdown rules of this and that um there's there are uh, rumblings on the on the grapevine that, that there are possibly potentially going to be allowed to to have fans back in um how how they can get away with that i'm not entirely sure to be honest but it will be uh, interesting to see when fans do come back in uh what the what the reaction is but i, I just think players um have basically just got used to the situation. Like you say, we've had a couple of maximums. Uh, Kyron Wilson had one against young Ashley Hugel yesterday. Uh, it was nice to see Ashley actually do her out on TV for a change because he's had a rough couple of years on tour. He's not had the best of draws. And uh, he's, he's had a couple of clobberings and he only lost 6-4 yesterday. So it's a, it's a good stepping stone for young Ash. And obviously had Stuart, Stuart Bingham had one in his, in his first round match as well. So it tells you the tables are playing well, you know. Uh, Matt Selt had, uh, I think he had five centuries today against um, Amin Amiri, uh, a player he's expected to beat anyhow, but five centuries equals the record um, for the most centuries in a best film. So it's a phenomenal feat. So it tells you the tables are playing well. It's the UK Championships now, so everybody's up for it as well. Well, we've got to the second round stage and we're going to pick out a, a couple of selections for you. Uh, when I when actually you know me, myself and Ian chat before we uh, we do this, and he mentioned one match and I was really surprised. So we'll come to that in a minute. Come to your first selection, Big Mac, uh, in the second round that you think has got a little bit of value written all over it. It's very very tough if I'm honest with you, Naz. There there isn't a great deal to go at. So this is very very small stakes betting. Uh, and, and, and possibly on both selections, if, if you get an out uh, with profit, I might be tempted to take it. The first one's not a massive price. Well, it's, not, it's not a bad price. It's odds against. Um, and, I, and I'm going to go with with Robert Milkins, the milkman, uh, to play. Uh, sorry, to beat David Gilbert. Um, interesting one, this. Rob's a, a very, uh, we all know how good Rob Milkins is and ha- has been. Uh, probably underachieved a lot, Rob, to be honest. Uh, phenomenal potter on his day. One of the best single ball potters has ever been. And still real hard work when he fancies the job. And he's two to one to beat Dave Gilbert. You might get shades of nine to four if you shop around. Um, the reason I fancy him is not that, that Rob's absolutely on fire. I think Dave Gilbert's on a real knife edge at the moment. His results since that World semi-final a couple of years, a couple of years ago haven't been outstanding. And he's slowly but surely, I mean, I've watched him a couple of matches recently and, and he's really, really struggling. He just looks like a man who's totally devoid of confidence. And when you're devoid of confidence, you, you want to be playing sensible players who are going to sort of like do things at your pace where we know what Rob Milkins is like. He slap bangs at everything. Uh, it's the way he plays. He plays it well. When I say slap bangs, that's a bit harsh against Rob, really. He, like, he likes to have a goal, basically. He's very, very aggressive. And if you're a little bit tentative and you're playing a Rob Milkins who's who's, who's on his game, you know, he, he, he's not a nice player to play. And I just think that two to one is a little bit too big. If Rob gets in front, if he goes three one up, if he gets four two up, something like that, it's all ifs and buts. It's four four on the head to heads. Rob won the first four. Um, Dave Gilbert won the next four, which is not surprisingly, Dave has been in great form in the last few years. But I, I, I just get the feeling that. Dave's got that £100,000 defence uh, of his world semi-final coming up uh, into next year. And it's like it's hanging over him like a dark cloud. And, and instead of going, well, I'm actually quite glad I'm defending hundred grand because I've got hundred grand in the bank. They can't take that prize money off him. 
tax man can take of it. Will Suker can't take the rest off him. It players sort of like freeze up and panic uh, instead of going, well, actually, I've been really lucky to draw 100 grand out of one tournament. And I think Dave's Dave's got that looming over him a little bit. And I think he's, he's, he's panicking about getting the money in from other tournaments. And if you start thinking about money as a snooker player, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself and you're never going to win. And I just think Rob's a, a really awkward player to play when if you're in that frame of mind. And I think Rob's, you know, like I say, if he gets 4-2 up, you know, if he gets 5-2 up, something like that, 5-3 up, I'd trade it out for a little bit of profit. It's not set in stone by any means. Robert Milkins in a round 2-1, to 9-4. to four. Uh, The other match is an interesting one, and it's Ronnie O'Sullivan against uh, Alexander Ersenbacher. Tell us about this one, because this is where I got the the, the surprise. Ronnie's been playing well, got to the final, of course, of uh, the uh, the Northern Ireland Open, lost uh, again to Judd Trump 9-7. But you fancy Ersenbacher here. Tell us why. I, I just think the price is a little bit... I, I, listen, I'm not saying he's going to win now. I think the 6-1 to one available on Ersenbacher is too big. I think it's a great trading price. I know Alexander Ersenbacher very, very well. I know the type of game he plays and I know the type of player he likes playing. He loves playing the likes of O'Sullivan because he, loves, he just loves going into potting contests with him and stuff like that. And Alex is a very... He's massively, massively underachieving at the moment. He's got bags of talent... But for me, he's probably in the top eight, ten players on tour for talent-wise. Who's his talent? Bags of confidence, plenty of bottle as well. He beat Old Sullivan a couple of years, a couple of years ago in Wales. Admittedly, it was a shorter match. As you say, Ronnie's been in good form. He lost the final to Judd last week in, in the final of the um, the Northern Ireland Trophy nine seven. And if you're really honest, as, as, as Ronnie did well to get to the final, he didn't absolutely score his brains in. Like he doesn't quite score as heavy as what he used to, which is a sight. Don't get me wrong, he's still a great player and he still has his spells where he scores well, but he's not as consistently scoring heavy as what he used to be. And Ronnie can sometimes, you know, the way to intimidate Ronnie, if you can intimidate Ronnie, is to attack him. And Alex doesn't know anything else. Look, you know, Alex got absolutely steamrolled. He played well in beating Nigel Bond first round, but you'd expect Alex to beat somebody like Nigel now. All due respect to Nigel, I think he got the quarterfinals and semi-finals this last year, didn't he? And Ronnie had absolutely nothing to beat uh, in Leo Fernandez. He beat him 6 nil on, on Tuesday night or Wednesday night or whenever it was. Um, and I just think the 6-1 to one is a very big price on somebody like Alex. If he's beaten Ronnie before, it, it, he'll not be afraid of beating him again, you know. And I just think, you know, I, I just think it's a little bit on the big side, Naz. And, I, and, you know, like I say, if he, if he gets his nose in front, it's, it's an if, it's not big stakes punts in this. They're both low stakes. But if he gets his nose in front, 4-2 up or something like that, if he gets to five, you're going to get a great cash out on it or a great trade on it because we know how good at Ronnie is at winning matches. Um, but I just I just think it's a, a tad too big for me. Well, there you go. A couple of selections then in the second round of the UK snooker. Small stakes plays on Robert Milkins. And Alexander Ersenbacher, a reminder of those selections at the end of the video. Uh, Don't forget, we do tell you, please do gamble responsibly. And myself and Ian will be back uh, with you for a look ahead to the next round of the UK snooker. Of course, if you have any questions for us, info at snookerpodcast.com and uh, Big Mac will answer them for you. At Snooker Podcast on Twitter. We're on YouTube as well. Search the Snooker Podcast channel. Uh, Lots of ways for you to get in touch with us. And we'll be back with the latest uh, UK snooker preview very, very soon.